brand component, one of the things you can do to help support this channel is we have a DVD. Uh, if you go onto my website, Living on the Fly, L I V I N O N F L Y, you will go to the homepage and you will see a masterclass fly time video. This is a video that you can stream, download, or you can get the hard copy here, which just came out for the holiday season. It shows you how to tie nine of my favorite patterns. Talks about not only how to tie them, but more importantly, discussing the qualities that I think make for a good pattern, especially nymphs. And we're gonna show you how to do this in a very quick, simple, and efficient way. And not only are we going to show you how to tie them, we're gonna show you how to fish them on the water. My friend Jay Nichols from Headwater Books did an amazing job filming choreographing and then just editing this product. So this is a really high quality product that I couldn't be happier with. And this is just one way you can support the channel. We're always gonna be pumping out content with information about tying flies, travel uh, techniques and so forth. But if you wanna help support this channel, one of the things you can do is you can go online. And right now for the holiday, we have this video for 1995 and you get a living on the fly sticker and that includes free shipping. And this sale will end just before Christmas. So if you're interested, please go online and you can go to the checkout and help support this channel. So with that being said, let's get right into the fly tying component for today's class. All right, what we're tying today is a Ray Charles. The Ray Charles is a crest bug pattern. I first came across back in the late 90s while fishing the Bighorn River in Montana. Very simple. And anyone who's watched any of my stuff before who and who knows me knows I like to keep things as simple as possible. The only thing we're going to do different than the original or one of the things we're going to do a little different than the original is just put this on a slotted tungsten bead jig hook. So... For the hooks that we're going to do for this, probably my favorite size is a, is a Foley Mills, like a size 18, which is more, in fact, probably more like a true 16. And then we're going to have a 2.4. You can go a little heavier. You can go a little bit less. Tungsten bead, silver. We're going to use a 12-aught tying thread. Let's get this locked in. Secure this. Four the overwinger for the flashback on this pattern we're going to be using a vivas medium tinsel just flat any sort of flashback material that you have will suffice i'm going to tie this off okay now we're going to tie this in just doing the pinch technique one loop and then slide that back until you get the right measurement we're just going to tie this down right on top the hook shank maybe a little farther back Now, next, we're going to tie in the body, which is going to be ostrich churl. You can use gray, you can use tan, you can use olive, you can use pink. There's a number of colors. Normally, gray and tan are my two favorite colors for where I'm fishing, but again, find what works for you. They even have orange, so really anything that makes you happy. We're going to cut off four plumes of the ostrich churl. We're gonna tie this in kind of at the base, which is the thicker section of the plumes, and secure that right down at the bend. Lock this in. I'm gonna take your tying thread and we're gonna wrap forward. Now, standing this straight up, we're gonna collect all four fibers. Now, what we'll do is we're gonna take this, making sure that the four fibers are collected, we're gonna start wrapping right at the base, and then start proceeding forward. What I like about this pattern, one, obviously because of how easy it is to tie, once we wrap up to the bead, we're gonna tie this off. When you pull this out of the water, the plumes are gonna be folded back. It's gonna look like a, like a drowned rat. It doesn't look like it has any sort of movement, kind of like marabou. But when it's in the water, these plumes just stick out. They just come to life. And I like this, even though it it's a little thicker than most Euro flies, this fly doesn't really absorb 
or kind of create too much surface area. Even it basically has the illusion of profile, wide girth, but it sinks fairly fast uh, in the water column. Once we have the four plumes of ostrich troll wrapped up, we're gonna take our scissors, just create a nice little landing strip right here to fold over our flash. We're gonna fold this over. There's our flashback, a little bit of bling. We're gonna tie this down right behind the bead. Once we have that secure trim, and you can do a few more half hitches, whip finishes, give it somewhat of a hot spot. You can use different color threads. Normally I'm using some sort of like fluorescent orange thread. We can take some Sally Hansen's Hard as Nail polish. Give that a little bit of a drop. And right there is just a modified, slightly tweaked Ray Charles. You don't hear many people fishing this pattern these days. I don't know why, because it is, uh, back in the day, it was one of the best saddle bug patterns and still is an incredibly, incredibly great crest bug pattern. You can also use this for scuds and so forth, but there you have it. This is the beadhead Ray Charles variation.